Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this session, uh, which is about sort of using AI and ways in which um, AI can uh, make the life of a um, teacher easier. And um, I'm going to be talking about Teachermatic, which is a, a AI platform um, that I've been involved in developing um, for the last year or so, and that we launched um, end of March and is currently being used by over 20 colleges. So, um, what I'm going to be covering today, um, I'm going to sort of introduce what Teachermatic's about, talk a little bit about the philosophy behind Teachermatic, um, do a bit of a, a live demonstration, and um, I'm going to share with you all a trial log on that will last for two weeks. So you're all going to get the opportunity to have a go with Teachermatic yourselves. Um, you can share this log on with uh, colleagues of yours in your college and uh, see what, what you think. And then at the end, I will um, take some questions. Um, if anybody wants to, um, I mean, I'm not, it's, it's years since I've used Collaborate, so I'm, I'm not too familiar with it anymore. So I'm assuming there's a chat thing like with Teams. So if you've got any questions, just chat, uh, put them in the chat, and um, then I hope whoever's chairing this will be able to call those out between slides. So a bit of background, um, why was Teachermatic developed? The main reason was was to make using AI, in particular sort of chat GPT type tools. Uh, Teachermatic is based on chat GPT, um, but it also uses some other um, similar platforms um, for developing um, AI content. To make it easy for teachers to do, when, when I first came across chat GPT, um, uh, just nearly a year or so ago, it struck me that this was an incredibly powerful technology for educators, but that it would probably be too difficult for a lot of teachers to do the kind of prompt engineering that's required to uh, to to get the best out of it. Um, now, some of you will know me. I've, I've worked in colleges, well, since 1986, which makes me feel very old. I've worked in, in digital since the late 90s, been a ILT director, um, led the blended learning consortium. And something that I've always been very passionate about is finding ways to make using technology easy for, for all staff. It's very easy to get those keen, enthusiastic staff using technology, but I've always been keen to find ways of bringing all um, teachers on board with things. And so Teachermatic was designed as a platform that any teacher could use that would be very simple to use that would allow them to, to save time on a lot of everyday test, tasks, make their sort of work um, a lot more efficient. Um, and also, it, it supports creativity. One of the great things about using AI is it gives you new ideas, new ways of approaching things. Um, we wanted to create an organisational solution. Um, I was very aware, having worked with a a number of IT managers over the last few years that they might have concerns about sort of platforms like OpenAI, which are based in America using an American servers that, that for you know, cyber security reasons, IT managers won't want their staff putting their user details into a non-EU based um, server, which um, most of the OpenAI ones are. Um, and so We've built an organizational solution where you're communicating with um, all of these chat GPT and similar services, but it, the platform is based in the UK. So while we're reaching out to those servers in the UK, in, in the US, um, the user's information doesn't go across at all, just a query goes across. So it's a much more secure um, solution. A little bit about the team behind Teachermatic. Um, basically, there's four of us. We're all FE, current FE or ex um, FE staff, so we're all very much uh, based within the sector. Uh, and a bit about the development process. We started developing it around August. Um, we firstly built a prototype. We got three um, expert users doing some testing, giving us some feedback, and then we widened this out to 50 users. 
Now, because they all wanted to get their colleagues involved because their colleagues saw what they were doing, this soon snowballed to 300 users. So we had 300 users from sort of January and February using the platform, giving us lots of feedback. And then based on that feedback, we produced um, the platform for launch at the end of March. We launched it in March, but we've been continually improving it ever since. We're very much driven by our user base, by our customers, by features. And so we're constantly updating the generators and adding new generators. So I'm now going to try and go go live. So I'm going to come out of PowerPoint and open up, share my browser. OK, so I'm, I'm going to now show you um, uh, Teachermatic. Um, so this is what Teachermatic looks like. So you log on and then what you see are over 20 generators and each of these generators um, schemes of work, FAQs, learning activities, multiple choice questions, etc., are designed to easily do a simple task um, that teachers will do in their day to day work. Now, we do have a chat bot generator which is for generic questions and so into this top one if there's any any sort of question that you have or anything that you want to do with ai that we don't have a generator for you can just and this just works very much like open ai so for example i've done here help me with a difficult meeting with students who has issues of attendance and punctuality and there you've got some advice on doing that if i scroll up the next one write a policy on student use of chat gpt for a college and there it's produced the policy. Write a risk assessment for a visit to a building site. So there it's created a risk assessment, hazards, controls, etc. Write a lesson plan for project project management on business level three. And so there you see it's produced me a lesson plan. So I'm going to show you some of the other generators now. And uh, to save time, I've, I've kind of loaded these up beforehand uh, because I know we've only got half an hour and I want to show you as many as possible. But the way that this works, uh, if I come out of that, if you want to use any of the generators, so for example, classroom questions, you click there. Say you're doing something on um, uh, you want five classroom questions on developmental psychology. We've got Bloom's taxonomy built into this one. Uh, we can choose open or closed questions. Click on generate. And you see it then, it's generated five questions that a teacher can take into the classroom, maybe to start the class off, to have some nice open questions to, to get the class going. And again, that's where I'm talking about this creativity thing. So I've, I've got, you know, over 20 years teaching experience, but when I've been using this tool, you know, I come up with all sorts of new ideas, thinking, oh, that's an interesting way to do something. I hadn't thought of that beforehand. So it's great for, um, doing, uh, giving you new creative ideas for doing things very quickly. So I'm now going to show you some generations that I've already done. So this is um, the multiple choice question generator, and I've asked it to generate me eight questions on Bloom's taxonomy. And so you see here which levels of Bloom's taxonomy focus on the ability to remember facts and concepts. Is the um, Text big enough for everybody there? I can magnify if needed. Uh, text is good size. Okay, so you see it gives me the correct answer there for all of these questions. And you can see that to write eight multiple choice questions, that literally took me less than a minute. 
how long would it take for a teacher to write eight multiple choice questions? You're probably looking at half an hour to do that. So you can see the time saving that's straight there. And with a lot of these generators, we've built in some useful export options. So for example, you can export into GIF format, which you can then cre create a text file, which you can upload into a BLE like Moodle or Canvas or Blackboard. Now again, think about the time saving of that. Now, that's one of the clunkier things in most, um, most VLEs is adding multiple choice questions. It takes, you know, three or four minutes to build each question typically. Um, but by creating this file and uploading it into the um, VLE, um, you can create eight questions, literally write them and upload them in about two minutes. That saved you well over an hour's work. So that hopefully is an example of um, how this can be a, a great time saving um, technology. We've got a, a variant on this particular tool. Um, and again, this came from our users where they said it would be really useful to have a generator that you could put in a web address and it would generate questions around that URL. And so what I've done here would the MCQ generator, so I, I, I could somebody read out that question for me. Sure. Uh, would the MCQ generators automatically include plausible errors, misconceptions as options, or would you need to stipulate in the instructions? No, it, it does that. that. We built all that prompt engineering in. The way this works, we coded all that prompt engineering to give you good multiple choice questions. Um, you know, we recommend that you check them, that you can edit them and change them if you wish to, if they're not perfect for you. But they are, you know, and I'm going to give everybody a, a link to, to have a go with. You'll see that they do generally produce very good questions. So, so what I've done here, um, I've taken this website, um, the NHBC website on building regulations, which is something that you know, construction students need to, to uh, learn about. I've taken the URL for that. I've copied that URL here, clicked on generate. I've asked it to create me 10 questions. And now also I've got a complexity slider. This is on nearly all of the generators. And so that's great for differentiation. We generally recommend you start in the middle, um, which is sort of generally around level two sort of thing. And then you can slide up and slide down if you want to increase or decrease the, the academic complexity. And so, so, so based on that website, it's created me 10 multiple choice questions um, about building regulations, about the minimum width of a fire escape, the maximum weight for a ceiling in a domestic dwelling, the minimum thickness for a structural floor in England. So lots of very detailed multiple choice questions. You see it's giving plausible um, answers um, as the uh, distractors, etc. The next question, uh, this is a particular favourite of mine, the, the classroom question which I showed you earlier on. Um, and so here I'm thinking in the case of maybe a travel and tourism lecturer is um, about to deliver a, a class on ecotourism. Uh, we've all been here as, t as teachers. This one is great if perhaps you've not had enough time, you've had a busy day, you've not had enough time to, to plan that, that lesson, you need some extra resources very quickly at the last minute. So you go to Teachermatic, you think, right, I want five discussion questions to take into the classroom on ecotourism. Um, you can use Bloom's taxonomy here. So you can go for the lower levels, maybe for level two students, you'd focus on knowledge and comprehension. When you're going up to sort of levels three, four and five, you might bring in application analysis, synthesis and evaluation. And here, um, I put in application analysis. So these will be more sophisticated questions. How can we use ecotourism to produce different solutions for environmental problems? What methods can be employed to illustrate the benefits of ecotourism? How can we separate and divide the elements of ecotourism? So it gives you five questions that you can take into the classroom for a discussion. 
The next one, FAQ, is pretty self-evident. So I put in Microsoft 365 as my topic, and it's given me five FAQs about Microsoft 365. And again, with all of these, you've got minimum copy, but for some of them, you've got the option to export, like with multiple choice questions. This one, again, a particular favourite and one that came from our users is a rubric generator. Now, marking rubrics, I think, are an incredibly powerful teaching, learning and assessment tool. If you produce a good marking rubric, it makes it easier for the teacher to do the marking. Um, and it's also really useful for students. If you give them the rubric up front, then they know what they need to address to get a good grade. And so with the marking rubric, the rubric generator, what the teacher must do is they put in an assessment name here. This one is producing an exercise plan for a client. And again, I'm looking at um, for sports teachers here. Um, you specify, you type in here, so this is what you add, what your performance indicators are going to be. So I put in here knowledge, understanding and addressing the client's needs. And you see it's produced me here a marking rubric with knowledge, understanding, addressing the client's needs and poor, fair, good and excellent as the criteria. And I can export this as a CSV file or a JSON file and uh, then that allows you to uh, share that with the students. Um, this this is one that we just added this week, uh, again, from uh, feedback from our users, an analogy maker. And so here, um, I want some analogies with homeostasis, so if something a biology teacher might want to do, and asked it to produce me five analogies. And so I've got homeostasis is like a thermostat constantly regulating to maintain a stable environment. It's like a ship's captain steering a course to keep the passengers safe and comfortable. And analogies are a great way of explaining things to students. So if you put in any concept, it'll give you a number of analogies to, um, to, to help that explanation. Um, again, this one is um, lesson objectives. And again, I'm looking at homeostasis and thinking about how I could do a lesson on homeostasis. And again, this one we've included Bloom's taxonomy with, and I've selected knowledge and comprehension, and it's given me, asked it to do five lesson objectives, and it's given me those five objectives around homeostasis, identify the components of homeostasis, describe the physiological mechanisms that maintain homeostasis, etc. And finally, the learning activities one. Again, this is really useful, particularly if you've got a very busy teacher who's rushed. Perhaps a maths teacher is teaching fractions. They put in fractions, they put in five, and this gives them five learning activities, a fraction matching game, have students work in pairs to match equivalent fractions, decimals and percentiles on card, fraction problem solving, provide students with a variety of fraction problems, and have them work together to solve them. Fractions bingo. So it gives you a whole range of different um, solutions there. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my PowerPoint. Does that, anybody have any questions um, while I move on? Okay, so I just want to tell you a little bit more about Teachermatic then. We launched it right at the end of March and we've already got um, 23 colleges signed up. So if your college isn't currently signed up and you'd like to maybe talk to people you know, so I've just got the logos here. Um, and um, these are our first users of Teachermatic. Um, I've put JISC in here because JISC are um, very interested in what we're doing um, and they've asked us if we would partner with them on an evaluation project and that has just started 
where eight colleges are working with ourselves and JISC to do a detailed evaluation of teacher matter. Okay, a little bit about the costings. Um, this is the one that I think most is a thousand pounds plus fat for 50 users for an organization is the sort of base product. And if you want an individual account, you can have a basic account for 9.99 a month or professional for 18 pounds a month. And so here is the trial login. So um, if you want to maybe take a quick photograph of that, um, perhaps if somebody could copy it into the chat, um, I'll leave that on for a moment. And this will work until the end of the month. I'm very happy for you to share it um, with any of your colleagues for them to have a go using Teachermatic and uh, see what they think. Um, please take a, a note of that email address, peter at transformeducation.co.uk. So if you've got any uh, questions or you didn't get time to uh, take that uh, trial log on down, you can email me and I'll, uh, I'll send it through to you, peter at transformeducation.co.uk. And um, just going to share now some some feedback from some of our users and um, I'll be happy to take some questions. Um, so does anybody have any any questions? That's kind of the the end of the presentation. How are colleges generally using that? That's a, a, a very good question. Um, in all sorts of different ways. We just had our first user group meeting uh, last week. Um, and um, some colleges are focusing it on um, teachers who they think need additional support, teachers, new teachers and teachers who have uh, had a, a, a lesson observation and didn't perform too well. Um, and um, some colleges are distributing it equally across all curriculum areas. Some are focusing on particular curriculum areas. And in general, they're using it for planning, for creating resources, for um, ideas for, for teaching and learning in, in all sorts of different ways. Um, what was the next question? I, I, ju I just saw that one. I'm not seeing. I'm sure uh, see the, the next remote. one is from Michelle. The right place. Oh. Um, yep. Uh, what barriers have you come up against when liaising with? Sorry, could you say that again? I I, I didn't hear that. Yeah, and, and uh, this one's specific. from this one's from Michelle. What barriers have you come up against when liaising with colleagues? When liaising with colleagues or colleges? Sorry, sorry, with colleges, not colleagues. Um. Well, thankfully, very few. I mean, we're absolutely de delighted that so many colleges have adopted it so quickly and we're getting, you know, as you see, tremendously positive feedback from our early adopters. Um, um, you know, we, we've certainly found cases where we've got some very enthusiastic people in the college who want to use it and they're sort of working with the uh, people in the college who hold the purse strings and trying to persuade them to... Uh, to um, find a budget and you know money is very tight in the sector at all times so some colleges where there isn't years of them to get it are um, you know being challenged to find a budget for doing it. Um, any other questions? Um, again, there's my email address if any of you want to uh, contact me uh, and the website for Teachermatic. 
I'll just go back to that trial logon uh, if I have a look at. Does the AI engine use um, US? We've done some training on it as well. So I'm not the right person to ask about this. I mean, I, I, we've, we've got a technical team of over 20 developers working on this um, who are very clever, do some really good stuff. Um, I'm not that technical, but um, I know they've done some training to make sure that it works around the, um, the UK curriculum. Um, it uses OpenAI, Leonardo, and other um, language generative models. Um, if you want to perhaps email me that question, I can pass it on to our technical team.